Hello and welcome to another Nilavision JavaScript tutorial. Today we'll be talking about pop-up windows. Pop-up windows can be a very annoying experience for the user, so you'll definitely need to put some consideration into when you want to use them. The most common use of pop-ups is of course when we want the user to be able to view some content without leaving the page, but you can also use pop-ups to nest external files that depends on its own local paths and maybe embedded media that you cannot directly access yourself, uh, sort of like you would with an iframe. The method I'll be covering here is the window open method, which is a very flexible way to show pop-up windows. And the most accurate documentation for this method is found on this webpage, quirksmode.org. And I'll of course leave a link in the video description. I've created a folder on my desktop containing a file called popup html and that is going to be the content uh, that we want to use for the popup window. So let's get started on coding the web page with the popup links. I'm opening up Dreamweaver here and don't worry that the doc type is not used here in this template. The code I'll be typing will be uh, compatible with HTML5 as well. So to start with, I'll rush down here between the body tags and create a usual link to the pop-up HTML file. And to start off with, I can just give it a target attribute and give it the value blank, which is uh, the HTML method for opening pop-up windows. Then I'll just type some text for the link and close off the link tag. And I'm just assuming that you know basic HTML, so I'm not going to explain what tags and attributes are. Then I'll just save the file now and open it in a browser. And what we see happen when I press the link is pretty much what happens in every modern browser when you press a target blank link. It will open in a new tab. And that's not exactly what we want, so it's time to implement some JavaScript. So I'm going to replace the target attribute with an uh, onclick event. And then I type in a, a function name. Now we haven't created the function yet, but let's just name it popwin. And when we call a function, we need to add some brackets. And later on, we'll also be passing some variables in these. So now we need to construct the function. So I'll just jump up in the document head and place a script tag here. The type for the script is of course going to be text JavaScript. And I'll also close off the script tags right away. And now I'm going to construct the function and we called it pop win we need to add brackets or parentheses for the function parameters and as always we add the curly brackets below and here we can write in the window open method and that's very simple we just type window dot open And in the parameter brackets, we need to fill out some options. And the code help here in Dreamweaver is actually showing us what we need to type in. Uh, first of all, we will uh, feed it with a URL. And for now, I'm just going to type it in as a string, pop up HTML. Uh, we need to separate the parameters with a comma. And the next thing we can type in is a uh, name and that actually corresponds to the target attribute uh, but the default value is blank so we don't have to uh, type anything in here the next parameter is a cool one that's the features and in here we can type in uh, all sort of uh, options for how we want the pop-up window to appear uh, we can give the window a height and i'm just gonna type in a uh, 400 uh, pixels and of course we can also give it a width um, 
and let's just give it uh, 300 pixels. And we can also control the position of the window. So uh, I'm just gonna say 200 pixels uh, from the top and uh, 200 pixels from the left. We can also uh, control the appearance of the browser itself. There's some uh, boolean values here for, for making the window scroll able. And we can choose whether or not to have a menu bar. Now the effect of this is of course uh, different on different browsers. We can also define whether or whether or not the user should be able to resize the window. Now on the World Wide Web Consortium's home page, there's a reference or uh, some documentation on the different options you can use with the window open method. And I'll just drop a link in the video description. But now we're ready to see the result of our code. And we can see that the pop-up window is working correctly with the size and position given and everything. But the underlying window is also following the link and that is because not only is the uh, onclick function running, but the HTML code with the link itself is also running. And we can change that by typing a new command line in the onclick event. We just type return false, and that will prevent the HTML from being executed. And that is cool because if there's no JavaScript support in the browser, then the browser will just ignore the onclick event and follow the link as normal. But let's try now to optimize our function by making it more dynamic. All the parameters we've created in the window open method is text strings, but we could actually replace some of them with variables. And that would be very useful if we wanted uh, other links to use the function as well. Now I'm just gonna try to take the href and pass it as a variable to the URL parameter. So I'll just uh, create a variable inside the function bracket and I'll just call it URL and then uh, I'll delete the static text string and replace it with the variable down here. And when I call the function down here from the onclick event, then I'll just pass the URL of the link and I could write the full URL but uh, but I'm just gonna write this dot href, which basically will take the href attribute of the current tag and send that to the function. It's because the this keyword refers to the owner of the event, which is our a tag. And by typing dot, we say we want a property of that owner. And uh, the property we want is the href attribute oh yeah so now our function uh, can handle uh, any link we want to demonstrate that I'll just copy our link and paste it down below and now I'll just change the href to w3.org I'll also just put a break between the two links and save it. And in the browser, we can now see that the same function is handling both links. To make sure that our pop-up window will pop up in front of the other window, we can add a method called focus. And in a perfect world, it would be enough to type dot focus at the end of the window open command line. But on quirksmode.org, they actually uh, recommend that we check if the browser support the focus method. And we do that by uh, creating an if statement in order to be able to work easily with our window open command line, I'll just convert it to a variable and I'll just call it uh, the pop code. Then uh, down below, I'm gonna write the if statement and I'm just gonna write if and then in the conditions, 
I'm going to write window.focus and uh, that should be enough to test if the browser support the focus uh, method. So in the body of the if statement, we can then add the focus to the command line, which is stored in this variable, the pop code. And that should look something like this. When I was preparing this tutorial, I did some tests in Firefox and I actually had some problems with the focus method. Uh, however, it worked fine when uh, the file was on a server, but that is why I'm testing the local file here on Chrome. It could be interesting now to try to pass uh, some other values to the parameters of the method. So um, I'm just going to create a new local variable uh, here in the function uh, and I'll just call it passed with and let me just copy that and uh, down in the width parameter I'm just going to replace the value here with the new variable but in order to put the variable in the middle of a text string I first need to close the quotes and then add a plus to add the variable and to connect the rest of the string I need to add a plus again after the variable and start the quotes again for the rest of the string. For the code to work now I guess we'll have to pass a value from every link. We could of course have given the variable a default value but let's just go down to the click events and see if we can't uh, pass individual widths for every link, individual widths, that's really hard to say for a Danish person. You just try and say, anyway, we'll give the first window a value of 400 pixels, and the second one can have a value of, let's say, 800 pixels. A very narrow window, a very wide window. And they're using the same function. I'm getting really tired now. Please bear with me. So good thing that I'm just about done with this tutorial. What have we learned today? We learned about the this keyword, which allows us to get properties from an element and pass it. We learned how to pass multiple data to a function. We haven't done that before. And we learned to combine text strings and variables Okay, so that's pretty good. But before I leave you to it, I kind of feel the need to lecture a little bit. What I want to say is, well, it's quite okay to use uh, the on-click events in your HTML. If you have a small website with a handful of links that you want to open in pop-ups or call another JavaScript function for that matter. But if you're building a bigger project or framework for several websites, uh, you would probably be better off by creating a script which would uh, collect all your pop-up links in an array. And there's actually a description on how to do exactly that on quirksmode.org on the self-same page that describes uh, the window open method. Basically what this script is doing is there's something called a for loop which scans through the document to see if there's any element with the attribute type uh, and the value pop-up. And any of these elements is going to be stored in an array, which is sort of a variable that can contain many elements. And for each element in the array, there's assigned an on-click event. So this is a much cleaner way to add events to objects. But as I said, it's quite okay to have a few uh, on-clicks here and there in your documents. And that's about all I had to say for now, which was quite a lot. But if you have any questions or critique or anything, Feel free to comment on YouTube or uh, if you're watching this on my webpage, you're welcome to send me a message on my contact page. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.